I'm sure they'll have one. Hello again, everyone. Hello. Do you have a nice lunch? Yes, thank you. Fantastic. Shall we get started again? Mm -hmm. yes. It's now my great pleasure to introduce you to Olia and I want to tell you the things that we do. Eva. 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 She'll be sharing with us some ideas on how to work with listening and pronunciation. So please welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Mostly mm. problems with production. For mm. example, when you teach models in the past, um, you can use Euclid and uh, ask people to write down what they hear uh, with a particular, for example, must have. But this is all technical writing. Yeah, oh, so technical, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll get back. No. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to, we're going to do a, couple, a few activities that I do with my learners, and uh, we're going to do them as a learner. And then we're going to reflect on uh, why they work and, and uh, what their advantages are and what their limitations are. And uh, so first of all, right, so let's, uh, let's take a closer look at what problems learners have uh, with listening. Here we're going to watch an um, excerpt from a TED, TEDx talk and uh, watch it um, just think about what level of learners would, could you use this Okay. Hear that? That's nothing. Which is what I, as a speaker at today's conference, have for you all. I have nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. Zippo. Nothing smart. Nothing inspirational. Nothing even remotely researched at all. I have absolutely nothing to say whatsoever. And yet, through my manner of speaking, I will make it seem like I do. Like what I am saying is brilliant. And maybe, just maybe, you will feel like you've learned something. <laughs> now, I'm going to get started with the opening. I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. I'm going to do this with my right hand. I'm going to do this with my left. I'm, I'm going to adjust my glasses. And then I'm going to ask you all a question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you all have been asked a question before? <laughs> okay, great. I'm seeing some hands. And again, I have nothing here. Now, I'm going to react to that and act like I'm telling you a personal anecdote. Something to break the tension. Something to endear myself a little bit. Something kind of uh, embarrassing. <laughs> and you guys are going to make an awe sound. It's true. It really happened. And now I'm going to bring it to a broader point. I'm going to really back in. I'm going to make it intellectual. I'm going to bring it to this man right here. Now, what this man did was important, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, for one, have no idea who he is. I simply Google image the word scientist. <laughs> and now, you see, I'd like it to seem like I'm making points, building an argument, inspiring you to change your life, when in reality, this is just me buying time. Now. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at the numbers. This is a real thing that's happening right now. The number of talks that I'm giving is one. <laughs> In... So, uh, just for a moment with the person next to you, which level, what would you do in this talk? Thank <laughs> you. 
because of the game. Oh, yeah. And, and there's no excuse for not doing it. It's a thing. And you could just get the music, even teenagers, just get the listening for the day. Thing. Because what in the what time is it? And then they think they're listening. So it's like, because your brain can't read it. So after a while, you just She said, she said, yeah, you could, depends on the task you can yeah, use yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I ask this question because very often when, when you talk about these things, people say, the chart is only for advanced people, right? So, and we've used the, this tool, I think, for B1 learners here. Uh, and uh, so let, let's have a look at what uh, and B1 learners, would, would they understand the gist? Yeah. 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 Right? So, so but let, let's have a look at what they might find difficult in this video. Right, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play just one uh, sentence from from it here. Can you can you think about what's in the gap? Now, now I'm gonna get started with the opening. Mm -hmm. So why don't you? Now I'm gonna get started with the opening. Okay, so what's in the gap? <laughs> right. So, um, how was this thing pronounced? What do you think? Okay. Right. So this is what we think here. It's called. Let's listen to it and check how it was pronounced. I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. How is, was this pronounced? Yeah. So again, instead of gonna, instead of gonna. I'm going to make a Okay. Uh, and let's do one more. And then I'm going to ask you all a question. 
question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you all have been asked a question before? And then I'm going to ask you all a question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you all have been asked a question before? So this is what you said, and how did you say it? And then I'm going to ask you. So what's missing? hand gestures. I'm going to do this with my right hand. I'm going to do this with my left. I'm, I'm going to adjust my glasses. And then I'm going to ask you all a question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you all have been asked a question before? strung together as, yeah. as one. Exactly. So um, we can practice them, not in order to make our students speak that unclear, yeah. mm -hmm. but so that they learn to pick them up yeah. um, more effectively. Yeah. Um, and I suppose you could also do how many words, like this is what mm -hmm. you hear, how many words are there. Yeah. Or what, I think mm -hmm. that. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, can I make a comment that um, yeah. um, when you use those on YouTube, you can slow it down. I yeah. think in the TED app, mm -hmm. or the TED, the, TED, yeah. the TED Talks website now allows you to slow down the speed. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really comfortable to hear what you're saying. Right. How, uh, these pronunciation with, of I'm gonna as I'm gonna, mm -hmm. how frequent do you think this is? Is it like an out, out, outlier or is it a very frequent pronunciation? I think it's frequent. Yeah, as I said, mm -hmm. I, I, I listened to, uh, to some examples here and it looked like something like 5 to 10 percent, which is still a lot. Probably mm -hmm. just, I'm gonna, not gonna, but I'm gonna, okay. Here, and uh, the thing, um, there is a problem here. So, uh, w when I do this with my learners first, right, so this is the typical reaction, <laughs> right? So, and uh, because this is all, like, this looks like elementary, right? And I think that the arrived uh, conclusion that if I'm not even catching these elementary sentences, and probably, oh, phrases, then probably I'm not even elementary. Uh, kind of this thing here. So, uh, another thing here. So, we've, we've listened with them here, we've, we've transcribed a few things, and we found out that and then might be pronounced as and then. So, what do you think will happen uh, next time we hear it in a stream of speech? Are they going to catch it? Are they going to not catch it? What do you think? Verb. And I was asking, okay, does the 
this does this sentence contain the word that? And we've just diagnosed that it might sound like this answer. He said, no, it's not there. I played it a few times, we located it. Next time, next ne next sentence, what do you think? You got it? No, not there. Right. By about the tenth, he started to uh, get them consistently. Right? And uh, what this kind of teaches me is that so these skills like understanding uh, pronunciation and putting uh, putting the sound into words, they're they called decoding skills, right? And um, so at least like just finding out about how words are pronounced is not enough. And uh, we kind of need to understand like, as teachers how to teach them. And I find a very useful metaphor like teaching vocabulary. Because teachers, we understand a lot about teaching vocabulary here. What do we understand? We understand uh, a lot about language. So we understand that like, there are lexical items, there are chunks, there are different like, uh, verbs, nouns, um, idioms, and so on. We understand a lot about our learners here. We understand that what they already know and uh, what they might need. So, and we understand a lot about teaching. So we know that our uh -huh, vocabulary, I will probably need to present it. Uh, then some kind of practice, like from less control to more control, will depend depending on your teaching style, of course. And um, then there should be something next here. They should get exposure to it, so this vocabulary somehow rebinds it and so on. Right? So we get a very good understanding of what it means to teach this particular thing here. And it would be really nice if we had a similarly thorough understanding of um, teaching decoding skills here. So what's happening in the language, like, like we just seen, right? We listen to it. And also, what do the learners already know? And what do they need? And also, how do I teach? How do I present it? How do I practice it for next? Right? So, um, one thing is actually missing from, from this uh, is with these skills, you can't really start like, thinking about methodology if you don't really understand what proficient speakers do here. So, so um, the people who, who write about this are people with a background in, uh, in psycholinguistics, basically. Right? So, and uh, here are a couple of books. They thoroughly recommend. So, you can leaf through them here and find me later and I'll look for the books. But um, basically, if, if we look at what happens here first uh, in the mind of a proficient speaker, this proficient speaker, so in their mind, they have like, a whole for Ghana, they have a lot of different examples of, of how it's pronounced, right? And they acquired them when they were kids. And, and when they were kids, they were listening really, really intently and noticing anything, everything, right? And their brain knew that it needs to learn different pronunciations. And you can see that for, it has a different one for um, it has a different one for Ghana, but it also has like, quite a lot of, uh, for the chunk, as you said, like um, Ghana, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and so on. Right? And um, so when the person here is, here is this thing. <coughs> okay, please come back. No, I don't want to. Okay. So the here is, they match it to another one, right? And um, then there is an automatic processing, a bit of automatic processing that matches it to, uh, to, which chunk it is, and then it, it becomes like very, very difficult for you to remember. Like you, you heard at the beginning, I'm gonna, but you did not notice this, uh, that it was pronounced, I'm gonna, because uh, you mapped it, and this immediately gets deleted, and, uh, and you start processing this, right? So how is a typical learner different? Here, uh, the typical learner has a lot fewer examples in this map, and, uh, what here? If, if, if the learner analyzed something and noticed that uh, that it might be pronounced this way, uh, something in my brain might create a new one, but the error might be missing also, right? So it's there, but there is no processing here. So he isn't he hasn't got the skill to match this one with that one, right? So um, this is a typical learner. Okay. Uh, so, and basically, it is quite difficult to populate this thing because you might might have noticed, like for instance, some, some learners mispronounce the word chocolate. Here it is, chocolate, right? And we could have a lesson about chocolate 
factories. You could say the word chocolate 100 times in that lesson. Mm -hmm. But it is very likely that after that lesson, <coughs> if you test them on their awareness how this word is pronounced, they will still be saying chocolate. They didn't notice her. Because uh, they kind of used other kind of cues to deconstruct the word, and then the, the brain doesn't think that it's necessary to add it to the map. And so nothing is happening here. Like they've been saying quite a lot of this word, but nothing is happening. Or uh, they can also, uh, it, is, it is grammar like this here, they might be missing it entirely all, all the time, and if I miss something, I don't get any feedback, and also I can't populate it. So basically, we need activities that, first of all, uh, populate this, uh, add more to kind of dig, um, diagnose problems for the learners here and make it very, very clear that there is something that's happening. Right? And also, we need activities that train this thing. So, two di different types of activities so, diagnosing activities and training activities. The one that we did at the beginning is diagnosing and training. Diagnosing here, so uh, because we did not uh, train understanding it multiple times, right? So um, another thing that we need to do is to think uh, which features we need to, to look for here, because uh, <coughs> there are thousands probably, right? So do you see some kind of patterns here? What happens over and over and over again? Dropping sounds. Dropping, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So which sounds tend to get dropped more than others? Three consonants. consonants, right? Mm -hmm. Which two consonants get dropped a lot more than others? So, and so, right, and here, and, and then, and another example. One, Hannah. Okay, right. So, um, so yeah, so basically I analyze a lot of that. I do a lot of this work with my learners and I'll, I'll, I'll pass this here probably but the age dropping is not that maybe uh, so 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 basically these two um, happen a lot more frequently, so maybe these are the priority, right? And in terms of vowels like schwa here, weak schwa like was and so on. Right. So um mm, so if we think about, like, in, uh, like you said, in terms of like, when, you, when you teach Ghana, we need to uh, raise awareness of this here. So, so two things are missing here. Which grammar topics might be associated with? Past tense. Past tense here. So they don't right hear it yeah. because it's not there here, or because it's like uh, the, the air is not fully um, visible here. When else? Adjectives, yeah, you're satisfied, uh, frustrated, and so on, right? Uh, there is a list um, on your worksheet up here. At, at, can you look at this uh, list of grammar? So, what else is associated with, with uh, t and the missing? Passes. <laughs> Passes, here. What else? Negative. Didn't have, shouldn't. Point. Yeah, because a lot of them are end your ending the okay? Right. Uh, dropping uh, vowels, right, or pronouncing them really, really, really uh, weakly. You know, which, which which grammar topics are associated with this? Oh, here. So I. What else? Auxiliaries, yes. Auxiliaries, here. So, past, simple, past, continuous, also modals, uh, also the passive and so on. Right. So, here. so, so these are like really, really associated with grammar. And there is also this frame of thing chunks. Okay, they're not really associated with grammar, but they're really, really frequent here. If you look at top chunks in English, here, these are probably going to make it like 100, well, the top 50 maybe. Right. And they also get pronounced in a specific way. Right, and these are the ones that are the most frequent ones here, and they really, in my experience, they have to be addressed somehow. Okay, and the second is how. Right, 
So we're going to talk about this one. This is a diagnostic one, here. So um, learners basically just transcribe and find out, um, figure out how, how they pronounce here. And another one is training here. And there, they will normally just listen to the same feature a lot of times and, may, uh, and train the link between what they've diagnosed and actually just decoding it in real time. Okay? And let's have a look a little bit at the diagnostic activities. Right? So, just for a minute, with the person next to you, what was the activity? What was the procedure? Because as I said, I do the same thing with my learners. Right? How could the teacher provide support? And what do I need to prepare to do this activity? Just have one minute with the person next to you. So overwhelmed. Okay, right. Uh, any other reason to this? Well, I have to know what to do as you progress. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because uh, I have heard quite a lot of lessons here um, with this here. And sometimes here, so the class goes for 15 sentences and they didn't get the first one, hmm. didn't get any feedback. Yeah. Didn't get the second one, didn't get any feedback. By the 15th, they're so frustrated, they're not going to listen to you when you give them feedback. All right, so it's very important to with this very short feedback. Okay, right. So, um, and uh, what about what about the type of support? What type of support can we give them? And yes. Psychological support. We always talk about visual support. In terms of like, do we want them to pronounce it the way in their natural speech? 
speech probably not, but a lot of people who um, who write on this here, they say that, that actually getting their muscle memory um, to do the verb actually later it helps with actually hearing it better. So it's important to explain that you're not expecting them to pronounce it this way, but, but, but they need to um, try it out, say, say it a few times. So uh, this is what my typical board work would look like. Uh, so um, we populate it as we go here. So the first time, uh, after the first sentence, just a couple of examples, and then we start eliciting more and more and more examples, and then by the end of the diagnostic activity, they can see that, aha, it's not 500 different rules here, and that with these same feature happening over and over and over and over and over again, and there is a chance that I will be able to relearn it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that I need to tell them because they uh, just, 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 just to help them with their, their things. Okay? I'm going to show you uh, an extract from a lesson. So the, this is primar primarily not a listening lesson, this is a functional language lesson. And the learners are transcribing from an authentic video, transcribing expressions for small talk. Right. So and, uh, just watch this, it's going to be like four minutes. And think about this is my procedure here, because it's similar to what we already looked at. And uh, was it for, how do I prepare? And do how do I provide these four times of support? How many times are they listening? Any visual support at all? Do we work on understanding? Are they pronouncing or not? So trying to analyze this.
have different variants, and then get used to it. So this is great hint. Okay, I'm with the person next to you. Uh, back to the questions. Procedure your preparation support. It's brilliant.
I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. I'm going to make a lot of hand. I'm going to make a lot of hand gestures. So I'm not going to go into detail here, but uh, if if you want to try this out, I have I have a tutorial, a ten minute tutorial with this tool on my YouTube channel, and you can just watch it later. Um, basically, play with it for for five minutes, and then you know how to use it. And you can, even if you don't have the transcript, you can still use these things here with your pause or with your friends. Okay, so um, I didn't need and to gestures. do any, any editing before the lesson. Right, let's try another decoding activity from uh, the author is Michael Greenberg. And um, so, what are we going to do? Here, you do have the script. Um, if you like, you can see easily, you can use. This bit, but also page two of your worksheet, your script. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a bit from this, from the first line, and all you need to do is locate that bit. Which is what? Which is what?
first at all. So, the same question as previously. Uh, first, what do we do? What point of the lesson? Other types of tasks. Post listening. Ladies, for your so they listen to the audio a few times here. You you worked uh, as you normally have done it, and then they open uh, the, the back of the book with the transcript, and you do a little bit of that. What preparation do you need to do this activity? You need to, the transcripts, right? Anything else? But you don't have to, because again, open it in each assumption and play some random bits right out at the beginning, for instance, here. So, so, and you will be able to locate them, and the learners will be able to locate them, and then you will be able to play bigger bits here. So, so no audio editing, <coughs> just, just, just familiarity with, 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 with the best, oh, with, with, with it all. Right. Okay, right, uh, and a couple more lesson examples I'm not going to play. Again, um, there, there are some content details at the end. Um, I have links to these on my blog, right? and I, I recommend that you watch a couple more lessons and, and also analyze what kind of support uh, that the, the teacher is doing and uh, giving it what, what procedure it is and what, what do they need to, to prepare. But basically, this is so this is Mark Mooney, and what he does is uh, these activities, of course, with audios, and instead of just listening to the answer to a multiple choice question, the learners need to write the sentence in which the answer was. And this gives him a chance to do a little bit of this decoding. Right? So and another fantastic example is uh, Rachel Roberts. She is an author of Medicaid. And this is an example, again, of how we are working on a certain translation feature with the learners before the listening, actually. Right? So do watch these. Let's go to training activities. So, um, right, right, right. But the first one is like, very, very simple, but I should not be going to do it. But just um, listen and write down all the examples of going to work. Right. So, um, what preparation do you need? The answers. <laughs> yeah. really, you can do this together with the learners. <laughs> so, but probably, of course, book activities will be a I don't know, story, so there will be a lot of past. Here. So, 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 you need to decide which grammar they need to focus on, basically. And this is, they can do it with authentic audio, but also with course books. Right. Another one is grammar sorting. Here, here you don't re really even need to decide which one, because listen to any tenses and put them into a uh, group. They're very easy. They're no preparation at all. Right? And uh, what I like about these activities is that I show them last class and then I can do them for homework. Right? So, okay, and another one is, um, <coughs> let's do this one. I learned this from an article by Shula Thorne. And I'm going to play a bit from this video. And I'm going to stop. And with the, uh, with, with, with the person next to you, you need to recall the last sentence. Can this try? Okay, great, I'm seeing some hands. And again, I have nothing here. Now, I'm going to react to that and act like I'm telling you. Okay. What did you hear? I'm telling you. Normally I would replay, but in, in the slides I can't do it, but let's continue. Personal anecdote. Something to break the tension. Something to endear myself a little bit. Something kind of uh, embarrassing. <laughs> and you guys are going to make an awe sound. Yeah. And again, I'll replay, but I can't. No? 
It's true. It really happened. And now I'm going to bring it to a broader point. At which places do I know that you did? How do I choose? I know the sentences. How do I choose the sentences? Remember, it's a training activity. It's training something. What is a training? Yeah, I stop after everyone with contained gunna. You might not have noticed That contains a what, sorry? Gunna. Oh, gunna. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. You're at you're me to go in that particular feature. And any point with audio, past tenses, anything here. So weak forms, prepositions, that kind of thing. You're just strategically points out. So, okay. Uh, how do I do this here? So normally, I do not do this in slides. I would, for a YouTube video, I just go on YouTube and use my arrow buttons and it just goes five seconds um, and I can rewind really, really easily. I do not need any editing, just, just, just the arrow buttons. Right. So, also, how many of you have used interactive transcript on, 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 on YouTube? Interactive transcript? What is this? Right, so, here, they used to have the word more. Nobody ever looks under more. So they replace it with three dots, and now nobody ever looks under three <laughs> dots, right? But when you do this, you open, and, and there is a demo that says like, well, one of the options is open the transcript. And this is what you're going to see. And the lines are clickable. So you can click on the line and replay. And sometimes it's only auto-generated. You can still use this here to replay, like, for education ability. <coughs> but if there is this, like, little error, you can probably uh, also ch ch change the language, right? And uh, now you have a good subtitles of high quality. And also, uh, if you run Control F, right, you can look for this if you, using your browser search. So one of the things that you could do is again, uh, for, um, if if I diagnose that my learners didn't quite catch the word was. Right. I could find, and, and if it was like a story in the past, I could play a few examples of that and we, 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 we could intensively decode that. So what we're going to do here is with that, um, there, there were some expressions like at this and at that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a screencast uh, and you just decide each time. Does the line contain at this or at that? Right. But do you need to understand the whole line? No. Sure. So, just yes or no. Oh, just eight of this or that. So. So, I'm looking out here at the, adding a space at the, at the beginning and playing one. Now, if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the numbers. This is a real thing. Which one? Yes. Now, if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the numbers. Now, if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the numbers. Okay. I'm going to just navigate to the next example. Okay. Let's take a look at this pie chart. What you're going to see... Which one? Let's take a look at this pie chart. What you're going to see... So again, this is a listening discrimination exercise between two frequent chunks. And let's take a look at this bar graph because it shows similar. And let's take a look at this bar graph because it shows similarly. So which preparation do I need to do before this? Yeah, yeah. So normally, like doing di di the diagnostic activity, we find out with the learners what they can't catch. And normally, I use uh, like not finite videos, but long interviews contain a lot of language, and then if they didn't hear just, for instance, here, then I just play a few lines with just. Okay? So, so longer lo longer videos will contain a lot of different language here, and you basically can find any anything. Okay? And um, this is all good, but um, one more thing here, so this is, this is a tool that I'm creating, and it allows to do a similar thing, a discrimination between chunks. 
but instead of like, searching the page for that, uh, you can input the chunks that you want to discriminate between, and we get a quiz. Here are, here are extracts from the transcript, um, gaps, and the learners need to listen, and input what they hear. So here is an example. And then I'm going to ask you all a question. This is, and then I'm going to ask you all a question. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you? Six equals twelve. And then interestingly enough, six times two also equals twelve. That's math. Six equals twelve. And then interestingly, six equals twelve. And then interestingly enough, six times two also equals twelve. That's math. One, two, three, four, five. And then almost immediately following that, we get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Baby Bopper, and I'm hungry in my tum tum. Brad Pitt. Any? And I'd like you to think about what. Okay. So here the feature was and plus something, and then an I and so on, right? So, um, so basically, uh, what you do is go to tubequizzer.com uh. and insert the link to your video, and then you can there is something in the video, and if you want to create a gap fill, then you, you click create a quiz. Right? If you just want to see examples and play those lines, you just do not click create a quiz. Right? And uh, this one would find all examples of at plus a word. So the syntax here is at plus asterisk. Right? And uh, you can also do, like for instance, a ch choice between two or three or four or whatever. So the syntax here is word, word, or expression, expression, and they're separated by, by, by vertical bar, or actually slash, doesn't matter. Sorry, where do, you, where do you create that? Where can you create those things? Uh, Tubequizzer.com. Tubequizzer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And there is a link. Thank you. Sure. Oh, okay. Right, okay. So, um, and you can combine them. So, for instance, like, at, is, or it, here, will, or you can even write something to this of this or at it. So you can create discrimination exercises mm -hmm. and here are other things that you might want to learn to discriminate between like chance with the book, chance with the this and all that kind of thing. Right, so this is the link. She, oh, okay. Here. But so you can you can create them yourself uh, yourself, right? So you 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 work on this video here and if it has subtitles you guide with the learners have problems. With this particular word, for instance, where you can create quiz. What else we, we do, we have some filters. This is a completely free tool, it's gonna to stay free forever. Um, so we have some filters <laughs> that um, where we kind of predict where these features are gonna happen. Right? And then you can input your uh, link and we get automatically quizzes here. So for instance, we found some contractions, contractions are very difficult to catch. Uh, we found some grammar, the present continuous, also for example, the present continuous, and as we've talked about here, so different grammar has associated features. Right? So this one's probably going to have more weak verbs, uh, past simple is going to have a lot of the like the t and so on. And we have some some chance where we predict this is going to be difficult for the learners and create them um, automatically, these quizzes. And what I do with my learners is they choose which which one they want to do. So kind of we're working on autonomy, right? So so they know that these are difficult for them. So the next time I just send them a link to the whole page and then pick out the quiz. And so for, to do that, you need a video with subtitles. How do you find that to create this a bit of a page? How do you find videos with subtitles? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. But how? Because a lot of videos are not subtitled. Yeah, so you add comma cc, and then everything you found has subs. Sometimes it looks sub in Spanish, <laughs> right? But you can always check if there is English subtitles, and then you can input this into our quiz. And um, so cc, and we also have like a lot of quizzes that are on the on the main page, right? So, so you don't have to look for nice videos or something. Sometimes you can just have. And one more thing that you can do is you can 
go into search with uh, searching subtitles, and you can type, give me any expression. Basically, give me anything. Gymnastics. Okay. I've lost here. It's cringe you can find gymnastics. <laughs> I'll just say a quick quiz, it is a fantastic tool and it works on the phones too. So it works if you go to your browser and put it, it works. And Olya is doing a tremendous job. to understand the accent better, 
and after that they can do another listening task. You know, so here it was the grammar spotting. Here, so she, we, we had looked at craft sentences, and she had used a few craft sentences, and they needed to watch it again and support examples, but without support of the quiz this time. Right, and so basically, uh, for me, this kind of solved the issue of uh, not giving the learners these activities um, and kind of waiting for them to go to England and not understand the bus drivers. <laughs> right. So it's on the syllabus here, I do not have to spend a lot of time on these activities because a lot of this is for homework and it's time for the syllabus. And one important thing that it does is, what do you think this is? Two this represent? Fossilization. Yeah, fossilization. Because one of the, like, if, if you look again, if you go back to psycholinguistics here, but one of the reasons they have these fossilized mistakes because they are not hearing these bits here. So, for instance, like, if my learner has third person as dropping here, so they're not using it, so one of the reasons is they're probably not hearing it. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, this is one of the ways to, for, for intermediate learners and higher, to actually help them start hearing this and not only help them with listening, but also with, with, with acquisition of the structures that they're finding for the actually. So, um, there is play phrase me where you can look for examples of in, in films on YouTube. And there is basically this page. <laughs>